good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here. And today we have the tier 10 Japanese Super Cruiser, the Yoshino, in port to review. This has been a ship that many of you have been asking for me to review, and I have been working to it for much of 2020, collecting coal and such. And now it is here, and we shall go through it. So, pretty much an Azuma. As in most cases, there's some major differences between the two. Well, some minor differences that lead to major differences, and we'll talk about those here shortly. But we're going to go ahead and go through her stats. And no captive skills have been applied, nor modules equipped. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of this jazz. So armor layout, she has a 25mm bow, 25mm strip right there and 40 millimeter bottom plating, 30 millimeter side armor for upper armor belt, 30 millimeters of torpedo protection, 25 millimeter stern with a 175 millimeter belt right there, and then 25 millimeter, uh, I believe bow and stern are both the same, yep, and then a 30 millimeter cent central deck. Now her side armor is a little bit thicker than the Azuma, the Izuma has 27mm armor belt, while the Yoshino has a 30 So, you know, a little bit more armor there. Not too much, but it's there. And, of course, their citadels are pretty much the same. These are not the hardest ships to citadel. They've got that IJN citadel that's, you know, decent at longer ranges, but from closer in... They're just going to get blapped. So she has 178 millimeter belt on her Citadel. The Azuma, what does she have? Is it the same? Pretty sure it's the same. Yeah. It's pretty much the same as the Azuma in those, in those regards. So if you ever shot an Azuma or Yoshino, you know how um, not so tough these ships are from the side. But if you stay angled, you'll do okay. Uh, survivability, she has 61,800 hit points, while the Azuma has 58,000, so you do gain a little, a little bit of survivability there. 22% torpedo damage reduction. Her guns, she has 9 310mm guns, with a reload time of 18.5 seconds, so 380, uh, 360, 180 time of 36 seconds. Maximum dispersion, base of 217 meters and a 27% chance of starting fire on the target. And this is that lovely IJNHE, which hits like a friggin' truck and has very, very good fire chances. This is without, you know, Demolition Expert or flags equipped just yet. 52 millimeters of HE shell pin. Her AP shell has a maximum damage of, maximum damage of 8,650. Now, the Yoshino does have improved pin angles compared to the Azuma. If you try to use the, a the AP and the Azuma, you pretty much had to catch a ship almost completely flat broadside. The Yoshino has a little bit better pin angles than that, so you can afford to use AP a little bit more in those situations. Both AP and HE shells have a velocity of 836 meters a second, which I do believe is a bit quicker. No, they are exactly the same as the as the um, Azuma. Okay. Alright, torpedoes, the biggest change between the two ships. She has 4x4 four four torpedoes, so two sets on, or no, is it one set on each side? Hold on, let me check. Yeah, two sets, that's, that's what I thought. Two sets on either side for a total of 16 torpedoes. The range of 12 kilometers and a speed of twi uh, 67, 27 knots, that'd be some slow torpedoes, and a speed of 67 knots and a detection range of 1.7 kilometers. AA is slightly improved from the Azuma, has a rating of 90, but again, AA today doesn't really mean too much. It has some of the same AA amounts that the Azuma has, but since it's a tear up, they fire a bit quicker, so it's got that going for it, but definitely not an AA barge by any stretch of the imagination. Max speed of 34 knots, maximum turning circle radius of 920 meters, and a rotor shift time of 13.9 seconds. Base consumer range of 14.7 kilometers. And as far as equipment goes, oh, and you do have the option to switch over to these, I believe, what are these, 20, yeah, 20 kilometer torpedoes, which, let's do that right now, <laughs> um, 
I mean, on super cruisers or like large cruisers, torpedoes most of the time are just either oh crap situational torpedoes or they are. Let me throw them at these ships far off in the distance. They may hit them. Though. They may or may not hit them, and that's what we're going to go for here. Um, she has access to DFAA or hydroacoustic search and fighter or spotter plane, and of course, she does have a hill. All right, I'm going to go ahead and module her and captain her out, and I'll see you guys right back here in a moment. All right, she has been flagged and captained, so let's go ahead. Oh, and modulated, of course. So, um, as far as the modules go, I went with the main battery build, of course, so main armaments mod 1, damage con 1, aiming systems mod 1, damage con 2, concealment, and gunfire control system mod 2. Now, I did consider putting um, the, what's it called, main battery mod 3, yeah, on here, but, I mean, with an 18 second reload, that's already pretty low, and the additional range, I do believe, will fit the... Yoshino's playstyle a bit better. As far as consumables go, I'm going to stick with uh, DFAA and Fighter for now. I imagine with playing Azuma like Azuma, you'll be toward the back of the pack, and you know you don't want CVs to just have their way with you. You want to be able to put up some type of fight. And of course, I did, as I show showed earlier, equip the Type 93 torpedoes. All right, as far as the commander build, this is my Azuma commander. So we've got. Priority target, MLG turrets, adrenaline rush, superintendent, demolition expert, concealment, and fire prevention. And now this gives us, with the guns, a 31% chance of causing a fire with these nine guns. So pretty much we are going to be setting fires just about every other salvo with these guns. And they also have a 24.7 kilometer range now, which is pretty dang far. And the maximum dispersion is 232 meters, but do remember we did just push these guns out to 24.7 kilometers. So that's why it appears to have gone up, but it has, in all actuality, gone down. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and... Oh yeah, her summit range is 11.9 now, which is pretty darn stealthy. So yeah, alright. So I'm going to go ahead now and jump into battle, and I will catch you guys there. Hey guys, voiceover at Mountbatten here. And before I start talking about the Yoshino, just this match, this match that I'm showing you guys right now is actually the first match I had in, in the Yoshino. And it does a pretty good job of showing off the strengths and the weaknesses of the ship. Also, something very frustrating and beyond annoying happened in this match. And RCV, I'm not sure at what point I'm going to start in this match, but just pay attention to the chat. RCV, upon seeing that we had two Thunderers, a Yami and a Yoshino on the team decided that he, in his own words, was not going to, well, he did not support sniping. So he decided to not launch a single plane this match besides the automatic fighters that get launched when his ship gets spotted and rush straight across the map and down into the enemy team and committed suicide efficiently. Which, as you will see, as this match goes on, if we had a CV, the outcome of this match would have been very, very, very different. And this was beyond frustrating, so thank you, Mr. CV player, for deciding just not to support snipers. Before he even sees how any of his play or anything. Uh, as you see, originally I thought he just had the matchmaking monitor on and saw whatever the PR of our team was and decided he just wasn't going to give it anything this match. But nope, it's because the ships that were on his team were sniping ships. So, yeah, that was... You guys will see. But anyway, the Yoshino. So I've played her now for four matches. And she is, well, good. Very good. She's a good ship. I mean, if you've played Azuma, if you've played... Um, the Zao, you kind of know what to expect here. The easy way to explain how to play Yoshino is just to play it like a Zao. At least that's what I've been doing, and I've been having pretty good matches in her so far. So, 
what you do is when you play Zhao or Azuma or Yoshino, at least the way I do it, is that I try to go to the off flank. So my team's weak flank where the enemy team will probably try to push through and you kite. You turn away from the enemy team. They are pushing toward you. You're spamming them with HEAP, torpedoes, whatever you got to where they are efficiently, you know, try essentially trying to chase after you and you're just lobbing stuff in their face the whole time and that's how I play Zao, that's how I play Azuma, and that's how I've played Yoshino and Yoshino's very 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 good at that. On top of that too with the build that I have, I know it's probably not the you know, the ideal Yoshino build, it's working out for me though. Um, with the main battery guns they are very accurate. Every now and then, well not even every now and then, out of the four games that I played I had two Salvos that were just kind of like, what the heck is this German BB accuracy salvo? I had two salvos like that out of four matches, so that's not bad at all. Other than that, the guns are pretty consistent. You won't find all of the shells converging into a single pixel like the Siegfried does, but it's beyond workable. It's very, very workable. Very consistent guns. So the guns on the ship are fantastic. And again, Japanese HE has amazing alpha damage. Then on top of that, the, what is mine, like 40% uh, chance of starting a fire now with all the flags and stuff. 31% chance of starting a fire with all the flags and demolition expert on her. So you're going to be starting many a fire with the Yoshino. So if you're doing that, paying attention to like, you know, hey, I just started a fire on this battleship. Um, let me see if I can start another one. And then when he pops damage con, you know that you can easily set another fire after that damage con runs runs out. And then he's stuck with those fires on him. Fires are, boy, fires are strong with the Yoshino. So just be paying attention to that. And like when somebody pops their damage con, sling some more HE at them, and that fire is going to stick and burn for much longer. Now, the AP is very good as well. I didn't get to use it that much, but when I did get to use it, and in this match, I think I queued it up a couple of times. I may have fired one salvo of HE in this match, but I was mostly cutting for, uh, during this match. But anyway, the AP, when you do get to use it, when someone does slip up and shows you broadside, the AP is very, very, very good. I got... Um, Two matches from here, I got a London that get not a London, a Goliath that got stuck on the side of an island, threw AP at him, hit him in a citadel, nineteen thousand damage for one salvo, and then a um, Hindenburg at like medium-ish range, sixteen kilometers away, threw some AP at him. He showed me broadside, uh, got sixteen k off of him. So the AP is very very good if you can manage to use it. And like I said at the start of the video, her AP rounds does have a, a bit more better pins than the Azuma, so they don't have to be completely flat broadside to you for your AP to perform well. But of course, obviously, if there's bow in or steep angle, you're not going to do anything with it. And you are going to be firing HG most of the time anyway in the Yoshino. It's definitely, definitely the stronger between the two ammo choices, but uh, the AP is good as well. Um, now, the downside, biggest downside on the ship is definitely her armor. Even though it is a bit more improved than the Azuma, it's still, it's a bit more improved than the Azuma. That's not saying much. You can try to angle and stuff, and against cruiser caliber guns, you're perfectly protected from their AP, of course. But battleship caliber guns, uh, yeah, no. You don't want to take a hit from a BB if you don't have to. As it, this definitely isn't a situation like the Puerto Rico or the Stalingrad, where if you angle correctly, you can mitigate most of the damage coming in. You will mitigate the damage coming in, but it won't be most of it, and you'll still take pretty big hits from battleships. Uh, your best course of action there is to stay at longer ranges. Typically against battleships, you want to stay somewhere around 18, 19-ish kilometers away if you can help it. That way you have plenty of time to maneuver at, at their shots that are coming in. Also play with your throttle and with your rudder, you know, speed up a little bit, slow down, go in reverse for a second, throw them off a little bit. Yoshino isn't the quickest responding cruise, uh, cruiser, but doing that will still throw off a lot of battleship shots, unless they are just a good battleship player and can kind of call your throttle juke pattern. Um, but most of the times it'll help you for sure um, dodge a lot of shots. You'd be surprised at how much just traveling at one quarter speed at range really throws off shots. It's amazing. Um, the torpedoes, I did choose the 20 kilometer torpedoes like I said at the start of the video and 
Nah, I mean, they performed about how I expected them to. I just threw them at a channel where I thought some ships were going. I did manage to land a couple of shots. Not, I mean, I think it was literally like two and four matches, which, yeah, you, you know, go figure. Um, and it was a, a Yami. He was hopping from one island to the other. I'm like, oh, he's probably going to go to, you know, this island to his south next. And I just threw all four sets down that channel and sure enough, got a couple of hits on them. Um, it's also good to just, you know, kind of throw into a cap that you're maybe trying to defend from far off because, you know, you, you'd be surprised how many players just don't pay attention to, like, what ships have torpedoes and their ranges and all that or they don't know that information. And uh, more often than not, they'll just derp into it and, like, eat a random torpedo. That's all that Yoshino's torpedoes are really good for. Unless, of course, you you wind up in an oh crap situation where a ship pops up like two kilometers away from you. Um, other than that, they're not that useful. But, again, playing like Zal, going the off-flank, just throw them toward the enemy ships as they're kiting toward you. You might get a couple, might not. Wouldn't depend upon them. They're not your primary source of damage in the Yoshino. Now, something I forgot to mention in the uh, port section, her secondaries are actually really good, <laughs> believe it or not. They're the same secondaries that the Shikishima gets. The only thing is here they have a 6.3 kilometer max range before, you know, adding skills on, so they're not worth building into, but there's an opportunity here for this ship to have secondaries, good secondaries too, mind you, but um, they, they didn't go with it, so yeah. I mean, it's it's just weird they gave it the, the better secondaries. I find that so strange they gave they give this ship that sits in the back of the map for most of the match good secondaries. Now, obviously, with sitting in the back of the map, if you do, if you do manage to preserve your health in the Yoshino, that means when the end of the map uh, match comes around and it's time for you to push in, you'll have a pretty darn good cruiser here with most of its health intact that you can go in now and finish off those ships from closer range. Again, with the HE Alpha of the Yoshino's guns, you can slap the ever-living crap out of DDs with this. It's probably one of the best rounds to shoot DDs with besides, like, SAP, because you can get, like, 10, 12k salvos on DDs with the Yoshino. I've done it with the Azuma, with the Azuma's guns. So the Yoshino's guns, I know, can do it just as well. So you definitely have that going for you, too. And, of course, farming battleships is incredibly easy with the Yoshino with how accurate these guns are. I don't snipe a lot in this game. So if you're a good sniper, you probably could perform much better than I did in the match you're watching right now. And I did pretty good in this match, too. Um, and again, like with all other snipers, you definitely need spotting in the ship. And like the match you're watching right now, our CV literally refused to play. So toward the end of the game, we didn't have a lot of spotting going on. So I couldn't really shoot it too much. The ship is definitely not durable enough to do its own spotting. So that is a downside. You do need teamwork to, to get things done in the ship. And if you got a team that just doesn't want to work, or if the match doesn't go on for too long, you know, you'll, you'll be not doing a whole lot of damage that match. But the ship definitely has the ability to easily easily surpass 100k per match. The two matches, um, two of the four matches I that I played were stomps and they ended before I could really get to high damage numbers. They both ended around the six or five minute mark but I was at like 70, uh, 80k damage so those matches continue to go on easy, easy 100, 135,000 match there. But yeah, it's a solid ship guys. As far as coal ships go, I still think, obviously, get the Thunderer first. Thunder is leaving, so is Georgia. I would definitely get those two first. Um, but if you like super cruisers, if you like sniping, if you like the Zhao, this will be a ship that I think you will enjoy. It's a solid ship. It's pretty well balanced. It has amazing guns. Amazing guns. Amazing HE. Pretty darn good AP. But it pays for that with its armor. It barely has any. We all know this. We've shot plenty of Yoshinos. You guys that play Doshido or play Azuma you know what to expect. If you played Azuma, you're pretty much getting like Azuma 2.0 with the Yoshino, just a couple little changes here and there, little buffs here and there that make it a better Azuma. Now, something to note too is that the Azuma does get the better economy between the two. The Azuma gets that tier 9 premium economy while the Yoshino is a uh, reward ship, so it doesn't really get that premium. Well, it doesn't really get it, doesn't get it at all. So, 
economy wise, you know, uh, Zuma would be the better choice. Plus, you get the boost to doing damage to tier 10 ships as well with the Azuma. So if you're looking for a pure, just like economical grinding premium ship, Azuma would technically be the better choice, but Yoshino is definitely the better ship overall. Uh, something to mention too is that the Yoshino, for whatever reason, I tried to, to verify if this is still the case, the, Yosh the Yoshino shells are actually 305 millimeters, even though the guns are 310 millimeters. And it, I don't know if it's a bug or just how they they coded it or what. Um, and it's not something it's not something that the game tells you. You have to dig to find this stuff out. And um, I tried to find it on the forums if it still shoots the 305 millimeter shell. So apparently it still does. So you can't overmatch 21 millimeters of armor with this thing. Only 20 millimeters. But when you're shooting HE most of the time. It doesn't really matter, so yeah, it's a strange situation, but just know that if you're planning on getting the ship. Does it really impact performance from my point of view? Because again, you're using HE most of the time, and you only really use AP when something gives you broadside, so take that information and do with it what you will. Alright guys, that's what I think of the Yoshino, pretty solid ship definitely one that I would recommend picking up and you know do you need to go out right now and you know grind all your coal start saving your coal for the Yoshino no definitely focus on getting Thunder and Georgia right now and then once those two are gone and if you don't want Palmer Yoshino's in my opinion the next best choice so that's my recommendations anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel we're on our way to 25,000 subs just past 21,000 subs not that long ago can of thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Monday. I'm going to go play some more Cyberpunk now. The third part of that playthrough uh, was released yesterday, so if you're interested in Cyberpunk and seeing what it runs like on PC, which is a lot less buggy, please go check out that video. Anyway, guys, hope you have a wonderful Monday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.